Hey, welcome back to the channel, Porsche Riders. This episode, part three of our little manifold porting series. Let's get into it. Alrighty, Porsche Riders. So before we get into all our data and you know what we could have done better and all that sort of thing with the manifold, I figure let's have a, let's take a bit of a closer look at the flow bench. Uh, something you guys can definitely replicate. I mean, all it's called a floating pressure drop flow bench. Pretty easy sort of a thing to build up. Probably wouldn't cost any more than, I don't know, 150, 200 bucks to build. If you've got the materials or, or you know, the likes of the vacuum cleaner, probably cheaper. Essentially what I've started off with was a, a stuffed six cylinder engine block that I've just locked in half. Uh, I've got just some bolts in the bottom just to try and raise it up a little bit. It's not a very good shot, but as you can see, there's another piece of plexiglass in there with the vacuum cleaner end in it. There you go, there's a bit better shot. So you're probably asking, why have you taken a bit out of the cylinder and some plexiglass in there? Well, this little bad boy here is the reason. Is to aim or fire the smoke machine into the port. And that way we can see as the smoke goes through the port, past the valve and into the cylinder, we can see what the air is doing. We, we've got a better idea of seeing how it swirls and tumbles and all that sort of thing. And this, this little thing was only like $45, $50 off of eBay. So I think the fluid that goes into it was more expensive. Next we've got our little homemade fixture for our dial indicator. It's nothing more than just a little bit of steel strap and a few nuts and all thread and bits and pieces all cobbled together just out of junk. So we can measure our valve lift. Now this little thing, all that is, is actually a spark plug with all the china and the centre of it cut out. Piece of clear sheathing siliconed in, that goes in the spark plug hole. And then that's connected up to our tube, our suction tube or suction side of our manometer or manometer or whatever you want to call it. which is graduated in inches. Zero in the center, and it goes up to 48 inches. And also 48 inches the opposite way. And then we've got about a, uh, probably about a meter, meter and a half of just tubing down the bottom. And then last but not least, just our trusty old vacuum cleaner nothing special all I've done is I've taken out the filters and all the rest of it just so it breathes a little bit better and that's it that's our little flow bench now I did forget to mention the fluid in the manometer is it's just water with a little bit of food dye in it this little I guess you could call it an analog bench. It's not going to show you all the bang wizardry of, you know, the really flash high end benches or even the likes of the Super Trends bench, flow bench that is, behind camera. But it will show you restriction to flow. And as you keep using it, you'll be able to pick up on just little more little bits and pieces as, as you go along, which is what I've found with, with this little setup. Alrighty, push riders, before we get into our figures, due to my little stuff up, I started porting our manifold before I float it. So, hence why we use this exhaust heated manifold for our control manifold. Not really too much to worry about because they're very similar in volumes and 
inner dimensions. So as you can see, all our flow figures, they're all up and down and you know, round and round and all that sort of thing. So compared to our controlled or control manifold, porting the plenum was a pretty good move. All our, other than at the six inch and five inches of lift mark, which on a standard motor, you're not going to see that anyway. So pretty much from 400 thousandths valve lift down to 100 thousandths, we've seen pretty good gains. Now, when we match ported it, we match ported, we went in roughly about an, I think around about an inch, inch and a half, something like that. I probably would have said in part two. Then it all started to go backwards on us. In hindsight, probably what I should have done is just cleaned up the, the gasket face. So just take enough material off to match the gasket, maybe a mil, a few millimetres in, and leave it at that. Removing the pinch point, well, that was just a waste of time because that slowed down the air even further than what it was being slowed down by the 90 degree bend. Well, in hindsight, we needed this pinch point to speed up the air again after the air comes around that 90 degree. When we took a fair amount of material out of the sharp 90 degree bend, the, the inner bend, we see our fleet, our figures starting to come back again. So that's a pretty good indication. That's uh, somewhere you'd have to focus on a bit more heavily. With our manifold, I took a fair amount of material off, but I end up breaking through. So as you can probably see, there's a bit of tape. I just started to break through there, but essentially if we had another piece to weld in sort of to bridge the gap here or at least a little bit more weld just to fill in the really sharp so point so we can get a little bit more grinding out of it probably see a little bit bit better again so after all of that there might be a few questions maybe floating around in, in the, the old grey matter going you know is it worth me doing all this for the extra time and effort, do I get more out of it? Certainly. Definitely get a lot more out of it. Well, have a look at our flow figures just shown before. Not all is what it seems. Are you going to learn a lot more? Oh, geez, yeah. You can learn a hell of a lot more. To the point where it may end up being a good side hustle, a you know, little bit on the side, getting your mates come around with their cylinder heads, porting them, or inlet manifolds, exhaust manifolds, whatever it may be. They may go and tell their mates and so on and so forth, so it might be a bit extra cash in your pocket of a weekend. Don't get discouraged. Don't worry about, you know, all the high dollar engine shops that you may see on reality TV shows and a little bit of YouTube to a degree. It may be all, you know, doing all this, trying it all out, having some fun, learning some more stuff, it may end up being a, a different career choice. If you're only a young person, you know, like still in school, you know, high school, whatever it may be, hey, it might lead to a job into the performance industry. Who knows? But look, give it a try. Who knows? You might surprise yourself. So, anyway, that's it. Hopefully next video, I'm not sure what we're going to have, whether we're going to get stuck into Casper, our skyline, although I am in the middle of planning bits and pieces with that. Most likely it might be a cars and coffee event I just recently attended. We'll wait and see. Anyway, what are you waiting for? Go get your hands dirty. I'll see you next episode.